So you've got a ute, a pickup, a truck or a commercial vehicle and you want to finish it off because the manufacturers let you down. This is where we are, 79 Land Cruiser. Now, these come bare bones. They're basically a tin can. What we've done with this is we've insulated it with a dampening mat and then we've finished it with our acoustic liner. Now though, our product looks great and it's got all branding on it. You might want to put carpet on it. What we do have is a product called our four-way stretch carpet, which is a universal carpet, whether you've got a van you want to line the inside of or speaker boxes, something like that. This is an unbacked carpet that'll stretch. So with all these corrugations and shapes, I'm gonna show you how to upholster it from, I guess, floor and tuck it under the rubber. By the time you've put your plastic trims back in, this thing is gonna look factory. So you see on this car, we've done the front insulation as far as the dampening goes, what we call stage one, and we've stopped it just in this rear occupant area. The reason we've done that is because we wanna get in here and work. So I don't wanna stand all over it and get it contaminated on my clothes or damage it in that sense. We're gonna do this first, We've actually already done the roof, so we're working top down. Then we'll put the floor back in, finish insulating it, and this car will be actually comfortable to drive that you could have a conversation on the phone. So what we're gonna use is a contact spray grade adhesive. By contact, you need to spray this onto both surfaces. So the actual material or fabric, and you wanna stick it, spray it directly on here. You're gonna let that flash. You're gonna put the two together and it's gonna stick. The other thing we got is an application roller, which is good. We've already used it on here to push all this down. We're gonna use that to get a decent bond and roll it in. We've got some scissors, and we've also just got a little lever, which is gonna help us when we go to tuck it under this rubber here. So what I've already done with this is there's some tricky holes on these Land Cruisers, which are just around the jack point. So I've pre-cut those, and actually in our pack, we do do a pack for these cars. It comes pre-cut, as you see, so this is the pre-cut piece. Now, I'm gonna datum this down here around this jack location. So just doing a quick test fit here to have a look at it. So I know it's gonna sit around this pretty good. So the bottom squares are where I'm gonna start it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray that area and spray this area, pin it on there and then work across. So nice little trick is grab a bit of cardboard, bit of packaging that your goods come in. we we'll put that there. Just means the overspray out of this it's gonna go straight on there. We don't have to clean it off the car. Don't stress, if you do get overspray, you can use pre-paint cleaner, wax and grease, mineral turps, eucalyptus oil, anything to get it off any overspray area. So as you can see there, I've been able to reposition it a couple of times. If you lightly tack the material on and you don't go and rub it in, you've got a chance of pulling it off. Once I press, put pressure on it, it being pressure sensitive, it's gonna bond into that foam. If I wanna reposition it, I'm gonna tear the foam in half. So I've lightly rubbed it with my hand there. I'm just gonna double check. I'm happy with it. I know I've got extra material here. I know I've got extra material down the side. So we're gonna be right chase it across. So I've locked it in down there. What I want to be mindful of is that I don't end up basically pulling it up or pulling it down. So we're going to want to contour, I guess, roll over the, the surface, basically like they're mountains. So you can imagine if I glued it and just stuck it, pinned it down there and try and push it all in. I'm trying to stretch the material, which it will do, but you do find sometimes it wants to shrink. So I'm gonna spray this out to about here. And I'm gonna, the reason I'm gonna leave that unglued over there is so I can chalk a line down, flick it out, and then cut it with scissors. If I glue it right to the edge, you try and knife it, you're gonna have a hell of a time. So I'm just gonna let this flash. I can still feel it's got a fair bit of liquid in it. We want it just to tack off enough. And that waiting is, depending on the climate you're in, it might be anywhere from a minute to three minutes. It's a bit of a waiting game at this stage, gentlemen. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the lower edge as, I guess, a datum to basically pin it on so that I, I don't, if I start rolling out here, I could end up uphill in a big gap underneath. Seen that done plenty of times. So what I'm gonna do is just drag it across. Have a look that I'm happy with it. Now you can see here, there's a, a pleat wants to sort of happen there, but concentrating on those areas, 
can basically massage it out. So you can see here I've got what looks like I've got too much material. I can easy untack that. Push it all up. So I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. Now the reason I've, I've also left that dangle down there is so I can spray some glue up now, it's easier to work with. I'm gonna do the same thing here where I'm gonna stop here so I can let it hang down. So we just do this to get a reference and go, okay, we need glue applied to about here. I've got an idea. Gonna fast forward this drying bit, isn't he? Got any carpet jokes? No carpet jokes. This is a very serious. So this is where the buddier roller will come in handy. That it's got a few different shapes here that you'll use, but allowing us to push it right into that negative shape that's there. And now we can go over this. Let's tack it on the outermost surface, and then I can. Let it contour into all these shapes. Now we've got a couple of negatives in here, which this will fall into quite neatly. See on this side, I need a little bit more glue. So what you can see there is, it feels like there's too much material. If I give that a pull and I just chase that out, that's all gonna to disappear. Too much surface change here, we're gonna lose length. So I'm gonna actually glue it right up to here and then chalk a line. Another one is these windows are pretty easy to get out, so you can actually just push them out is the other option. Push this window out, trim to the edge and push it back in, depending on where you're at, what you wanna do. So now I've got it stuck down just to that top edge. I can push it in, it gives me a good idea of where it is. You get a piece of chalk, this is some fancy rolling chalk pen. You can roughly give me a line. But being pretty confident that I know where it is. So these last bits in the corner, we're trying to finish it up there. You can see here where we've got this extra material. That's gonna stretch out. And any pleat that you see in there, we're just gonna chase directionally out. So I know if I pull that up, we've actually got a trim that hides this, but if I can get away, even before we glue it, glue it in position, is just sort of massage it there where I go, okay, I'm confident with that now that it's all flowed out. Now this one here where it feels like we've got too much material, I'm still gonna diagonally pull it down. So let's massage it in to the corner where that wants to pleat. You see, pretty much problem solved it there. Well, by the time we glue that down, that'll all disappear. All I wanna do now is get in there with my chalk. Put a nice line. So that chalk line now, you can see there, we pretty much just join the dots on that as a nice cut. Now this is typically not going to be a straight line because of the surface change. So you can see here, um, leveling out what I've drawn on. Now that we've got a nice neat line is, what we can do is just pull it till it hits the corner and let that line touch down because we're gonna get a bit of stretch on the material. You can imagine like if I pull it this way, I can change that line to be what I want. So if you did cut it short and you go oh, I'm a couple of mil off, just give it a tug and you'll be able to get it touched down in that corner and hide it and make it look real trick. 
So another trick is I've got to spray in this corner. Now I don't want to get spray all over that edge, which I have to clean up. So just get a bit of masking tape. So now you can go in. I've butted it hard up in the corner. The good advantage we got is we got a square bit of foam there. So I'm gonna go in with this guy and try and push him around and it'll sort of wrap over the edge. Hide up any of that and stick it down. Now, a couple of little bits of glue there, get those off. I know we've got a plastic trim that hides all this, so we're not gonna see any of that. Got a little bit of glue there that I'll get some solvent cleaner on later. But I'm confident that that is all stuck down. So we just got a, uh, a pre-paint cleaner here, which is just like a wax and grease remover. I'm gonna just spray this on a rag, directly to the rag, and then we're just gonna wipe that off. And then one last thing is just to roll over everything. So this thing, you're confident that the adhesive you put on, it's pushed together and you've given it a chance to bond. So this particular, if you're doing it inverted on a roof, you're going to want to make sure that you do get in every stage of what you're sticking down and give it the best chance to stick. Right, so. so that's it. Now, factory quarter trim's back in. Disappointingly, too, I'd have never bridged a gap here, so We've got a lighter grey version of this if you want to try and match it up with trim, but this car is a dark colour. The seats are dark. Once you put your seat back in, you're never going to notice it. It's actually going to be, look pretty neat. and It's going to give you that factory finish. So if you've got a Land Cruiser like this 79 series, they've given you some raw timber natural feel to the car, which is less than desirable. So with a bit of extra carpet, what we're gonna do is wrap these. Now, something that we've discovered with them, by the time you put that extra thickness on there, by the time we wrap our carpet around here, it's gonna to be too thick. So we're gonna take around four millimeters off these two planes, which are gonna give us that float that we need to do it. So I'm gonna trace that on there, quickly hit it on this sander, and then we're basically gonna glue that to that, wrap it around the edge, and then put that in there, and it's great, it disappears, matches the rear wall.